Hi folks. Uh, well, today actually I have a, 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 a true story um, of Scottish love and devotion um, that if for instance you were an Outlander fan that perhaps would um, echo that of, of Jamie and Claire. Um, and it's the story of Greyfriars Bobby um, and I'm telling you it today because 149 years ago today on the 14th of January 1872 um, a small Isle of Skye terrier called Bobby died um, and with him ended this tale of, of love and devotion and fidelity um, that has rippled down the years and made this this lovely little dog called Bobby famous uh, worldwide. <coughs> So, this quite amazing story, I think, starts in 1850 <clears throat> when a, a gardener called John Gray, uh, together with his, his wife Jess uh, and their son John, um, arrived in Edinburgh. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, John, or, or actually he was called Jock, um, which is often, you know, in Scotland, a man called John will be called Jock. Um, so unfortunately, Jock uh, was unable to find work as a gardener, um, and he he wanted to avoid, you know, ending up in the workhouse or something like that. So he managed. What he managed to do is he managed to to join um, the Edinburgh Police Force as a night watchman. Um, so he he managed to get this job uh, as a night watchman. So, uh, Jock is patrolling uh, the streets <coughs> at night and to keep him company through those long, long dark nights, he took on a partner, this lovely little Sky Terrier, um, his watchdog you could call it, and whose name was Bobby. And together, Jock and Bobby became a, a really familiar sight. Um, as they as they trudged round the the cobbled streets of Edinburgh's old town, and for those of you who have who have visited Edinburgh, you'll know the streets that I'm talking about. All the little closes and the Royal Mile and all these little streets that run off it. And so every night, um, Jock and Bobby would patrol these streets, and through thick and thin, through through winter and summer, um, through good weather and bad weather they were faithful friends and became really well known and, and beloved by uh, the population there. Um, in, in October 1857, unfortunately though, uh, Jock developed tuberculosis, um, you know, this terrible disease that uh, was very bad in Scotland, made worse obviously by our, our damp climate. Um, and unfortunately this worsened um, until in, uh, in February 1858 uh, Jock sadly passed away and uh, with Bobby lying at his feet. Um, so it was very sad. Um, and at Jock's funeral, which was held in Greyfriars Kirkyard, um, Bobby the Sky Terrier was one of the most conspicuous of the mourners. Um, and next morning, the curator of the graveyard, James Brown, found Bobby lying on the newly made mound of earth of Jock's grave. Now, Jock, John Brown, the, James Brown, sorry, the, the, the curator of the graveyard, unfortunately, he felt that he could not permit this to happen because there, there was an official order at the gate to the courtyard stating that dogs were not admitted into the courtyard. So accordingly, you know, Bobby was driven out, driven out of the, the courtyard. However, next morning, James Brown came back to the, the courtyard and there the same thing happened again. Bobby was lying on the grave of Jock. This went on, the third morning was wet and cold and this James then took pity <coughs> on this faithful, lovely faithful 
animal and he gave him some food. So Bobby made the, the courtyard his home and he lay on his master's grave all day, every day. Often in, in very bad weather, people would attempt to encourage him to come indoors, you know, because it was so cold and wet or snowing, but Bobby would not leave. And for 14 years, 14 years until his, until his own death, Bobby faithfully lay on his master's grave. During the course of those 14 years, Bobby made many, many friends. And actually, he ended up being fed every day at lunchtime um, in, a, in a local coffee shop, which was run by a Mr. Trail. Um, and so what would happen is, punctually, every day at the sound of the one o'clock gun, as it booms out over the city. Um, for those of you who've been to Edinburgh, you'll know that at precisely one o'clock, a cannon is fired from the castle to tell the population the time. So every day, when the one o'clock boomed out over the city, Bobby would jump up, leave his post, and appear at Mr. Trails for his meal. Um, so this was, <laughs> this was quite a, a quite an amazing thing, really, and people loved it. Um, and in actual fact, he, he even uh, received, uh, every once a week, he received um, a special treat of steak that was given to him uh, by a Sergeant Scott, uh, who was uh, uh, a member of the Royal Engineers, who were, and he was based up at Edinburgh Castle. And he would come down uh, once a week and, and feed Bobby steak. Um, so this w w was quite a, a spectacle, really, that Bobby, every day, you know, at lunchtime, when the one o'clock gun boomed, boom, up he would get, run away to Mr. Trails and get his lunch and uh, get fed. There was a bit of a crisis because at this time in Edinburgh, due to an outbreak of disease, um, it, it was a regulation w was put out that all dogs had to be licensed. Um, and had to have a licensed donor and it was feared that Bobby would have to be destroyed because unlicensed dogs w were being destroyed. Um, however, fortunately, when the, the Lord Provost of the city, Sir William, Cham Sir William Chambers, quite a famous Lord uh, Provost, um, when he heard of this, he paid for the, the license himself and Bobby was saved. So it shows you how, how much Bobby was loved, you know, at, even then in his lifetime he was, he was loved. Um, however, regrettably, as I said at the start, today, uh, the 14th of January in seven, 1872, Bobby sadly passed away and he was buried in the same uh, Greyfriars courtyard where his, his master lay and where he himself had maintained you know his loyal vigil for 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 so many years um and his, his grave is now marked uh, by a gravestone um a year after his passing a statue commemorating bobby and again this shows how much he was loved by by the people of edinburgh you know in his lifetime um so it's it's not just this is not just a story that has has grown uh, afterwards, uh, you know. So a, a year after his um, passing away, a statue um, was erected, uh, and it's located just outside Greyfriars Courtyard. Um, for those of you who have been there, if you do go, there's actually a, a pub now called uh, Greyfriars Bobby Bar. Uh, quite a big pub and it stands really just in front of that but it literally was just outside it is just outside um, the the entrance to Greyfriars Kirkyard um, and it includes it, it, it's a, a life size uh, statue of Bob, Bobby and the statue was paid for by a, a local aristocrat um, Baroness uh, Burdette Coots who you know she'd heard the story and was just was very keen to to help fund this uh, commemoration to his life, um, and it was unveiled 
um, in November 1873. Um, actually, it was originally built as a drinking fountain, which was quite a nice idea. Um, and it had an upper fountain for, for humans um, and a, a lower fountain for dogs. Um, but unfortunately, over the years, uh, they were taken away uh, and it is just a statue now. Um, uh, so there is a, a lovely inscription uh, on the statue which reads a tribute to the uh, affectionate fidelity of Greyfriars Bobby. In 1858 this faithful dog followed the remains of his master to Greyfriars Churchyard and lingered near the spot until his death in 1872. So that's a really lovely tribute to this this wonderful faithful and loving dog. Um, so the statue is, is now visited by hundreds of thousands of people uh, each year in normal years um, and uh, they all want to see it and take photographs of it. Um, there is a little aspect if you do come in the future to, to visit it a lot of people started rubbing uh, Bobby's nose and the nose is getting quite badly worn it's you know, the, 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 as you'll have seen from the picture, the, the dog is painted black and um, <clears throat> the nose is often rubbed through to, to the brass and there are concerns that um, it will be damaged irreparably. Um, so if you do come to see it, just have a photograph and not really rub his nose, please. Because um, we've had it here a long time in Edinburgh and we want it to be here a long time uh, in the future. Um, and in actual fact, if you, if you like the story of uh, Greyfriars Bobby, you can actually see his um, his football um, and his collar can now be seen uh, in the Museum of Edinburgh. And that museum is located down the Royal Mile in the Cannon Gate section of the Royal Mile. Um, and it's actually, for those of you who, who uh, know it, uh, it's, it's opposite where um, our old jewellery show you missed, ju jewellery show showroom used to be. Anyway, so that's very worthwhile if you were in Edinburgh. Go and see his statue, pop down around a mile, and you can see his uh, his collar and um, his football, which is lovely. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this this lovely little story of of, of love and devotion. Um, it certainly is one that people in Edinburgh are very fond of. They do like Bobby and they've always loved him and I think they always will. So until uh, we meet again, I just like, would like to, to wish you, as always, all the very best from Scotland.